Kosovo Liberation Army. The Kosovo Liberation Army was an ethnic Albanian nationalist paramilitary organization that sought the separation of Kosovo from the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia and Serbia during the 1990s and the eventual creation of the Greater Albania, stressing Albanian culture, ethnicity and nation. Military precursors to the KLA began in the late 1980s with armed resistance to Serb police trying to take Albanian activists in custody. By early 1990s there were attacks on police forces and secret service officials who abused Albanian civilians. By mid-1998 the KLA was involved in frontal battle thought was outnumbered and outgunned. Conflict escalated from 1997 onward due to the Yugoslavian army retaliating with a crackdown in the region which resulted in violence and population displacements. In September 1999, with the fighting over and an international force in place within Kosovo, the KLA was officially disbanded and thousands of its members entered the Kosovo Protection Corps a civilian emergency protection body that replaced the KLA and Kosovo police force, as foreseen in United Nations Security Council Resolution 1244. The ending of the Kosovo War resulted in the emergence of offshoot guerrilla groups and political organizations from the KLA continuing violent struggles in southern Serbia and northwestern Macedonia, which resulted in peace talks and greater Albanian rights. Former KLA leaders also entered politics, some of them reaching high-ranking offices. The KLA received large funds from Albanian diaspora organizations. There have been allegations that it used narco-terrorism to finance its operations, and reports of abuses and war crimes committed by the KLA during and after the conflict, such as massacres of civilians and prison camps. In April 2014, the Assembly of Kosovo considered and approved the establishment of a special court to try cases involving crimes and other serious abuses allegedly committed in 1999 to 2000 by members of the KLA. The KLA is regarded as one of the most successful insurgencies of the post-Cold War period and as a model insurgency, with its quick success coming mostly from an unusual configuration of geopolitical and popular phenomena. A key precursor to the Kosovo Liberation Army was the People's Movement of Kosovo. This group, who argued Kosovo's freedom could be won only through armed struggle, traces back to 1982, and played a crucial role in the creation of the KLA in 1993. Fundraising began in the 1980s in Switzerland by Albanian exiles of the violence of 1981 and subsequent emigres. Slobodan Milosevic revoked Kosovan autonomy in 1989, returning the region to its 1945 status, ejecting ethnic Albanians from the Kosovan bureaucracy and violently putting down protests. In response, Kosovar Albanians established the Democratic League of Kosovo. Headed by Ibrahim Rugova, its goal was independence from Serbia but by a peaceful means. To this end, the LDK set up and developed a parallel state with a particular focus on education and healthcare. The KLA made their name known publicly for the first time in 1995, and a first public appearance followed in 1997, at which time its membership was still only around 200. Critical of the progress made by Rigova, the KLA received boosts from the 1995 Dayton Accords, these granted Kosovo nothing and so generated a more widespread rejection of the LDK's peaceful methods, and from looted weaponry that spilled into Kosovo after the Albanian rebellion off 1997. During 1997-98, the Kosovo Liberation Army moved ahead of Rugova's LDK, a fact starkly illustrated by the KLA's Hashim Thasi leading the Kosovar Albanians at the Romboye negotiations of spring 1999, with Rugova as his deputy. In February 1996, the KLA undertook a series of attacks against police stations and Yugoslav government officers, saying that they had killed Albanian civilians saw part of an ethnic cleansing campaign. Later that year, the British weekly The European carried an article by a French expert stating that German civil and military intelligence services have been involved in training and equipping the rebels with the aim of cementing German influence in the Balkan area. The birth of the KLA in 1996 coincided with the appointment of hans jurg Geiger as the new head of the BND. The BND men were in charge of selecting recruits for the KLA command structure from the 500,000 Kosovars in Albania. Matthias Kunzel tried to prove later on that German secret diplomacy had been instrumental in helping the KLA since its creation. Serbian authorities denounced the KLA as a terrorist organization and increased the number of security forces in the region. This had the effect of boosting the credibility of the embryonic KLA among the Kosovo Albanian population. Not long before NATO's military action commenced, the U.S. Committee for Refugees and Immigrants reported that Kosovo Liberation Army, 
attacks aimed at trying to cleanse Kosovo of its ethnic Serb population. The NATO North Atlantic Council had stressed that KLA was the main initiator of the violence and that it had launched what appears to be a deliberate campaign of provocation. The KLA received large funds from the Albanian diaspora in Europe and the United States. It is estimated that those funds amounted from $75 million to $100 million. While there is no evidence the KLA was itself directly involved in such activities before the NATO bombing of 1999, there have been allegations that proceeds from narcotics trafficking donated by Albanian drug lords formed a significant portion of the KLA's income. When the U.S. State Department listed the KLA as a terrorist organization in 1998, it noted its links to the heroin trade, and a briefing paper for the U.S. Congress stated, We would be remiss to dismiss allegations that between 30 and 50 percent of the KLA's money comes from drugs. By 1999, Western intelligence agencies estimated that over $250 million of narcotics money had found its way into KLA coffers. After the NATO bombing, KLA linked heroin traffickers began using Kosovo again as a major supply route. In 2000, an estimated 80% of Europe's heroin supply was controlled by Kosovar Albanians. Between 5 and March 7, 1998, the Yugoslav army launched an operation on Prikaz. The operation followed an earlier firefight in which four policemen were killed and several more were wounded. Adam Jashari, a KLA leader, escaped. In Prikaz, 28 militants were killed, along with 30 civilians, most belonging to Jashari's family. Amnesty International claimed that it was an extermination operation. On April 23, 1998, the Yugoslav army ambushed the KLA near the Albanian-Yugoslav border. The KLA had tried to smuggle arms and supplies into Kosovo. The Yugoslav army, although greatly outnumbered, had no casualties, while 19 militants were killed. According to Roland Keith, a field office director of the ISIS Kosovo verification mission. Upon my arrival, the war increasingly evolved into a mid intensity conflict as ambushes, the encroachment of critical lines of communication, and the KLA. Kidnapping off security forces resulted in a significant increase in government casualties which in turn led to major Yugoslavian reprisal security operations. By the beginning of March these terror and counter-terror operations led to the inhabitants of numerous villages fleeing, or being dispersed to either other villages, cities or the hills to seek refuge. The situation was clearly that KLA provocations, as personally witnessed in ambushes of security patrols which inflicted fatal and other casualties, were clear violations of the previous October's agreement, and United Nations Security Council Resolution 1199. The KLA never won a battle in the war. The original core of KLA in the early 1990s was a closely knitted group of commanders consisting of commissioned and non-commissioned officers belonging to reserve regular and territorial defense units of the Yugoslav army. In 1996, the KLA consisted of only a few hundred fighters. Within the context of the arms struggle, in 1996-1997 a report by the CIA noted that the KLA could mobilize tens of thousands of supporters in Kosovo within a two- to three-year time frame. By the end of 1998, the KLA had 17,000 men. Religion did not play a role within the KLA and some of its most committed fundraisers and fighters came from the Catholic community. Former KLA spokesman Jacob Krasnicki said that volunteers came from Sweden, Belgium, the UK, Germany and the US. The KLA included many foreign volunteers from West Europe, mostly from Germany and Switzerland, and also ethnic Albanians from the US. According to the Serbian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, by September 1998 there were 1,000 foreign mercenaries from Albania, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Afghanistan, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia. The Mujahideen unit of 115 members operated in Drenica in May to June 1998, and dozen of its members were Saudis and Egyptians, reportedly funded by Islamist organizations. The group was later disbanded, and no permanent jihadist presence was established. During the Kosovo conflict Milosevic and his supporters portrayed the KLA as a terrorist organization of militant Islam. The CIA advised the KLA to avoid involvement with Muslim extremists. The KLA rejected offers of assistance from Muslim fundamentalists. There was an understanding within the ranks of the KLA that foreign assistance from Muslim fundamentalists would limit support toward the cause of Kosovo Albanians in the West. After the war, the KLA was transformed into the Kosovo Protection Corps which worked alongside NATO forces patrolling the province. In 2000 there was unrest in Kosovska Mitrovica, 
with a Yugoslav police officer and physician killed, and three officers and a physician wounded, in February. In March, the FRY complained about the escalation of violence in the region, claiming this showed that the KLA was still active. Between April and September, the FRY issued several documents to the UN Security Council about violence against Serbs and other non Albanians. Some people from non Albanian communities, such as the Serbs and Romani, fled Kosovo some fearing revenge attacks by armed people and returning refugees and others were pressured by the KLA and armed gangs to leave. The Yugoslav Red Cross had estimated a total of 30,000 refugees and internally displaced persons from Kosovo, most of whom were Serb. The UNHCR estimated the figure at 55,000 refugees who had fled to Montenegro and central Serbia, most of whom were Kosovo Serbs. Over 90 mixed villages in Kosovo have now been emptied of Serb inhabitants and other Serbs continue leaving, either to be displaced in other parts of Kosovo or fleeing into central Serbia. In post-war Kosovo, KLA fighters have been venerated by Kosovar Albanian society with the publishing of literature such as biographies, the erection of monuments and commemorated events. The exploits of Adam Jashari have been celebrated and turned into legend by former KLA members and by Kosovar Albanian society. Several songs, literature works, monuments, memorials have been dedicated to him, and some streets and buildings bear his name across Kosovo. Ali Amadi organized the NLA that fought in the insurgency in the Republic of Macedonia, of former KLA fighters from Kosovo and Macedonia, Albanian insurgents from Presevo, Medveda and Bujinovac in Serbia, young Albanian radicals and nationalists from Macedonia, and foreign mercenaries. The acronym was the same as KLA's in Albanian. A number of KLA figures now play a major role in Kosovar politics. Hashruddin Bala, an ex KLA prison guard was sentenced on November 30, 2005 to 13 years imprisonment for the mistreatment of three prisoners at the Lapushnik prison camp, his personal role in the maintenance and enforcement of the inhumane conditions of the camp, aiding the torture of one prisoner, and of participating in the murder of nine prisoners from the camp who were marched to the Berisha Mountains on 25 or July 26, 1998 and killed. Bala appealed the sentence and the appeal is still pending. The United States directly supported the KLA. The CIA funded, trained and supplied the KLA. As disclosed to the Sunday Times by CIA sources, American intelligence agents have admitted they helped to train the Kosovo Liberation Army before NATO's bombing of Yugoslavia. In 1999, a retired colonel told that KLA forces had been trained in Albania by former U.S. military working for MPRI. James Bassett, Canadian ambassador to Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, and Albania, wrote in 2001 that media reports indicate that as early as 1998, the Central Intelligence Agency assisted by the British Special Air Service were arming and training Kosovo Liberation Army members in Albania to foment armed rebellion in Kosovo. The hope was that with Kosovo in flames NATO could intervene. According to Tim Judah, KLA representatives had already met with American, British, and Swiss intelligence agencies in 1996, and possibly several years earlier. American Republican Congressman Dana Rohrabacher, while opposed to American ground troops in Kosovo, advocated for America providing support to Thekla to help them gain their freedom. He was honored by the Albanian American Civic League at a New Jersey located fundraising event on July 23, 2001. President of the League, Joseph J. Diogardi, praised Rohrabacher for his support to the KLA, saying he was the first member of Congress to insist that the United States arm the Kosovo Liberation Army and one of the few members who to this day publicly supports the independence of Kosovo. Rohrabacher gave a speech in support of American equipping the KLA with weaponry, comparing it to French support of America in the Revolutionary War. There have been reports of war crimes committed by the KLA both during and after the conflict. These have been directed against Serbs, other ethnic minorities and against ethnic Albanians accused of collaborating with Serb authorities. According to a 2001 report by Human Rights Watch, the KLA was responsible for serious abuses, including abductions and murders of Serbs and ethnic Albanians considered collaborators with the state. Elements of the KLA are also responsible for post-conflict attacks on Serbs, Roma, and other non-Albanians, as well as ethnic Albanian political rivals. Widespread and systematic burning and looting of homes belonging to Serbs, Roma, and other minorities and the destruction of Orthodox churches and monasteries combined with harassment and intimidation designed to force people from their homes and communities. Elements of the KLA are clearly responsible for many of these crimes.
Serbs, the KLA engaged in tit-for-tat attacks against Serbs in Kosovo, reprisals against ethnic Albanians who collaborated with the Serbian government, and bombed police stations and cafes known to be frequented by Serb officials, killing innocent civilians in the process. Most of its activities were funded by drug running, though its ties to community groups and Albanian exiles gave it local popularity. The Panda Bar Incident, a massacre of Serb teenagers in a cafe, that led to an immediate crackdown on the Albanian-populated southern quarters of Peck during which Serbian police killed two Albanians has been alleged by Serbian newspaper Kurur to have been organized by the Serbian government, while Aleksandr Vucic has stated that there is no evidence that the murder was committed by Albanians, as previously believed. The exact number of victims of the KLA is not known. According to a Serbian government report, the KLA had killed and kidnapped 3,276 people of various ethnic descriptions including some Albanians. From January 1, 1998 to June 10, 1999 the KLA killed 988 people and kidnapped 287, in the period from 10 June 1999 to November 11, 2001, when NATO took control in Kosovo. 847 were reported to have been killed and 1,154 kidnapped. This comprised both civilians and security force personnel. Of those killed in the first period, 335 were civilians, 351 soldiers, 230 police, and 72 were unidentified. By nationality, 87 of the killed civilians were Serbs, 230 Albanians, and 18 of other nationalities. Following the withdrawal of Serbian and Yugoslav security forces from Kosovo in June 1999, all casualties were civilians, the vast majority being Serbs. According to Human Rights Watch, as many as 1,000 Serbs and Roma have been murdered or have gone missing since June 12, 1999. A Serbian court sentenced nine former KLA members for murdering 32 non-Albanian civilians. In the same case, another 35 civilians are missing while 153 were tortured and released. The Convention on the Rights of the Child, adopted by the UN General Assembly on November 20, 1989, entered into force on September 2, 1990 and was valid throughout the conflict. Article 38 of this convention state the age of 15 is the minimum for recruitment or participation in armed conflict. Article 38 requires state parties to prevent anyone under the age of 15 from taking direct part in hostilities and to refrain from recruiting anyone under the age of 15 years. The participation of persons under age of 18 in the KLA was confirmed in October 2000 when details of the registration of 16,024 KLA soldiers by the International Organization for Migration in Kosovo became known. 10% of this number were under age of 18. The majority of them were 16 and 17 years old. Around 2% were below the age of 16. These were mainly girls recruited to cook for the soldiers rather than to actually fight. Carla Del Ponte a long-time ICTI chief prosecutor, claimed in her book that there were instances of organ trafficking in 1999 after the end of the Kosovo War. These allegations were dismissed by Kosovar and Albanian authorities. The allegations have been rejected by Kosovar authorities as fabrications while the ICTI has said no reliable evidence had been obtained to substantiate the allegations. In early 2011 the European Parliament's Committee on Foreign Affairs viewed a report by Dick Marty on the alleged criminal activities and alleged organ harvesting controversy, however, the members of Parliament criticized the report, citing lack of evidence, and Marty responded that a witness protection program was needed in Kosovo before he could provide more details on witnesses because their lives were in danger. Investigations are continuing. No Serbian Orthodox churches or monasteries were damaged or destroyed by the KLA during the war. The destruction of Serbian architectural heritage ways interpreted by Albanians within that post-conflict context is architecture becoming a surrogate for forces held responsible committing violence during the war needing to be avenged, in particular the Milosevic government and its army. Widespread attacks against Serbian religious sites commenced following the conflict and the return of hundreds of thousands of Kosovo-Albanian refugees to their homes. In 1999 KLA fighters were accused of vandalizing Devik Monastery and terrorizing the staff. The Kfir troops said KLA rebels vandalized centuries-old murals and paintings in the chapel and stole two cars and all the monastery's food. The Yugoslav authorities, under Slobodan Milosevic, regarded the KLA as terrorist group. In February 1998, U.S. President Bill Clinton's special envoy to the Balkans, Robert Galbard, condemned both the actions of the Serb government and of the KLA, 
and described the KLA as without any questions, a terrorist group. UN Resolution 1160 took a similar stance. But the 1997 U.S. State Department's terrorist list hadn't included the KLA. In March 1998, just one month later, Gerbald had to modify his statements to say that KLA had not been classified legally by the U.S. government as a terrorist group, and the U.S. government approached the KLA leaders to make them interlocutors with the Serbs. A Wall Street Journal article claimed later that the U.S. government had in February 1998 removed the KLA from the list of terrorist organizations, a removal that has never been confirmed. France didn't delist the KLA until late 1998, after strong U.S. and U.K. lobbying. KLA is still present in the MIP terrorism knowledge base list of terrorist groups, and is listed as an inactive terrorist organization by the National Consortium for the Study of Terrorism and Responses to Terrorism. During the war, the KLA troops collaborated with the NATO troops, and one of its members was called by NATO the embodiment of the Kosovo Freedom Fighters. In late 1999 the KLA was disbanded and its members entered the Kosovo Protection Corps. In April 2014, the Assembly of Kosovo considered and approved the establishment of a special court of Kosovo to try alleged war crimes and other serious abuse committed during and after the 1998-99 Kosovo War. The court will adjudicate cases against individuals based on a 2010 Council of Europe report by the Swiss senator Dick Marty. The proceedings will be EU-funded and held in The Hague, though it would still be a Kosovo national court. Defendants will likely include members of the Kosovo Liberation Army who are alleged to have committed crimes against ethnic minorities and political opponents, meaning the court is likely to meet with some unpopularity at home, where the KLA are still widely considered heroes. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.